Seven teams have two fixtures in double game week 34. So who are our favorite targets? Let's find out. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Backup Fantasy Sports. It is Wednesday, April 17th. My name is Ewan, and on today's episode, we're going to get into some Fantasy Premier League with a double game week 34 preview. Like I said in the intro, seven teams have two fixtures. Lots of people playing their free hits, lots of people taking hits to get in more doublers. I'm on free hit. This episode will mostly be going through each position goalkeeper defender midfielder forward to kind of figure out who the best targets are for double game week 34 so it should apply whether you are on free hit or you're just playing through like you have wild card 35 you already used your free hit in game week 29 or 25 or whatever you really needed with your chip strategy at the time so this episode should be for everyone but let me know in the comments below what you like what you don't like who the your favorite targets are for double game week 34 if i've missed anyone out Let me know in the comments while you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel or the podcast if you're listening on Spotify, Apple, all those fun places. But let's get into it here with the Double Game Week 34 fixtures. So I've got seven fixtures on the first slide, six on the next, and then we'll go through how every team is doing. Uh, Overall rank 42.565 in the world now, kind of. The wild card has been good to uh, the lethal weapons as I am on Fantasy Premier League. So, yeah, I was about 113K before I used the wild card and have just kind of shot up over the last three or four weeks. So it's been quite good. Hoping that my team is in good shape to catch up to the game week 35 wild carders. I do have Isaac, Nicholas Jackson, and Erling Holland up front, so I'm not too worried there. But the defense is going to need some work now that Connor Bradley is out for three weeks. And it looks like Trent Alexander-Arnold is on the horizon for Liverpool, which they desperately need as they are struggling all over the park in Europa League, in the Premier League, all that fun stuff. So... Uh, The game week kicks off with three fixtures at 3 p.m. UK time. Luton, Brentford, Sheffield United, Burnley, Wolves, Arsenal. Uh, On the graphic on YouTube, if you see a star next to their name, that means that's the first game of their double game week. And if you see two stars next to their name, that means that it's their second game of the double game week as well. So Luton, Brentford, Sheffield United, Burnley, Wolves, Arsenal on Saturday. Uh, The Wolves-Arsenal game is actually a night game at 5.30 UK time. Uh, that's wrong on the graphic there. Everton, Nottingham Forest, Aston Villa, Bournemouth, Crystal Palace, West Ham, and Fulham, Liverpool all take over the Sunday slate. So three games on Saturday, four games on Sunday, featuring a bunch of double game week teams. There are uh, two FA Cup games this weekend as well. Uh, Chelsea versus Man City and Coventry versus Man United. So we will keep an eye on that as well as it could uh, kind of alter some rotations in the future for FPL. The next six fixtures, the final six fixtures of double game week 34 look like this. Arsenal, Chelsea on Tuesday night. Wolves, Bournemouth on Wednesday. Crystal Palace, Newcastle on Wednesday. Everton, Liverpool, Merseyside, Derby on Wednesday. Man United, Sheffield United on Wednesday as well. And then Brighton versus Man City. So we got a bunch of football to watch over the next seven eight nine days uh champions league second leg is tonight as well last night barcelona got knocked out by psg and dortmund went through against atletico um athletic madrid uh tonight man city and arsenal play in their second leg so no updates on whether like players get through that match kind of thing just as a time stamp on when this game week preview is coming out So yeah, Arsenal with a quick Saturday to Tuesday turnaround, but almost all of these teams have about two days rest. Chelsea will be coming off of their uh, FA Cup tie against Man City, so they won't exactly be rested either. Uh, Man City with a huge gap between their FA Cup tie on when or Saturday, and then they play on Thursday as well. So just a heads up if you're thinking that Erling Holland might get rotated. I doubt it unless he picks up an injury. Here are the seven teams with the double game week and who they play. So Arsenal has Wolves and away, Chelsea at home. Bournemouth has Aston Villa away, Wolves away. Crystal Palace has two home ties, West Ham and Newcastle. Everton has Nottingham Forest at home and Liverpool at home as well. 
Uh, Liverpool are two road games, Fulham versus and Everton. Sheffield United has Burnley and Man United, and Wolves has Arsenal and Bournemouth. So, yeah, there's lots of interesting options here. Everyone will be quite heavy on Arsenal and Liverpool, I would imagine. Uh, and is that the right thing? As they did not look impressive on the weekend, Liverpool lost 3-0 in the Europa League last Thursday to Atlanta at home. So we need to see Thursday's team sheet before we make any final decisions because Klopp loves a comeback. So is he going to go all out for the Europa League? Does he believe that maybe the league is already out of reach? It seems a little presumptuous, but you never know with the mad scientist German. And yeah, Arsenal... Bayern Munich on the road in Munich tonight, 2-2, tied up there. If they go out of that, you could see them go full strength for the league as they're not in the FA Cup. Liverpool aren't in the FA Cup either, obviously. So lots to kind of consider as we move forward. Here is the fixture ticker. Uh, we are. It is going to focus mostly on the double game week teams, like who to target this week. But the fixture ticker is going to be, this is it, through the end of the season. So for the next five game weeks, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, here are the top five teams. Newcastle, Chelsea, Man United, Crystal Palace, and Man City. Here I've got Man United highlighted as they have a very, very interesting run down the final stretch of the season. Sheffield United and Burnley at home over the next two game weeks. Crystal Palace on the road. And Arsenal, Newcastle in their double, both at home, followed by Brighton at the end. And I have a certain Portuguese talisman captain for man united there bruno fernandez he is in my thoughts he could i'm already kind of thinking about game week 35 transfers ahead he rose in price overnight so he went up to 8.3 million hoping he kind of stays down there because he would be quite a tasty transfer to take out for bukayo saka say if arsenal do drop points over the next week in the league but they advance in the champions league it could be a case where Bakayo Saka, Mikel Acheta, kind of thinks about resting his star boy, saving him for Champions League ties. And honestly, it's been a little frustrating owning Saka. He's on penalties, so if he gets a penalty, it's that's good. Uh, Bruno is kind of the same way. But Bruno is kind of rising towards the end of the season. Uh, we'll see if Man United have to, how they do in the FA Cup this weekend. Against Coventry, they should advance to the final we will see. But yeah, the Portuguese guy or midfielder is definitely in my thoughts for game week 35. Uh, so yeah, Newcastle, Chelsea, Man United, Crystal Palace, and Man City are the top five best teams here. Then the worst teams are West Ham, Fulham, Aston Villa, Wolves, and Nottingham Forest. Kind of crazy that Wolves are down here considering they have a double game week this game week, but it's Arsenal, Bournemouth, Luton, Man City, Crystal Palace, and Liverpool. So it's not exactly easy for Wolverhampton as the season winds down. But yeah, we've got Newcastle up top, Crystal Palace, Sheffield United, Burnley, Brighton, Man United, Brentford. That's really good. Chelsea are second. They have two double game weeks after coming off a 6-0 drubbing over Everton. Cole Palmer with four goals. Nicholas Jackson with a goal and two assists. So Chelsea has Arsenal, Aston Villa, and Tottenham over their next or they have Arsenal this game week. They've got Aston Villa, Tottenham in their first double game week in game week 35, then West Ham. Then they've got Nottingham Forest and Brighton in double game week 37 and Bournemouth. So I'm already loaded up on Chelsea assets in my regular team, my non-free hit team with Nicholas Jackson, Cole Palmer, and Petrovic. Petrovic could probably be Gusto for anyone else, but I do think Palmer and Nicholas Jackson should, I mean, Palmer's already 100% owned. Uh, no one really enjoyed his points unless you captained him on Monday night. So great job by you if you did do that. But Nicholas Jackson, he was 0.4% owned in my kind of rank bracket on Monday night. So all of his 14 points, I think I got to enjoy 13.96 of them or something like that. It was ridiculous. So huge gain for Nicholas Jackson. I expect him to be about... 0.2.3 more expensive this time next week for the double game week 35 preview moving over here so we're going with the uh top five assets for each team or each position and i limited it to one per team because unfortunately that just meant that liverpool and arsenal kind of dominated these rankings so i did want to like get some different thoughts different options in for each uh, position here. So goalkeepers, we got David Rea, 
Pickford, Jose Sa, Neto, and Allison as the top five for each player on the YouTube channel. I've got FPL points over the last six. Uh, Non-penalty, XGI, and predicted points here. So for the goalkeepers, it's just the predicted points that we should really go off of. So Reyes, 7.98. Pickford, 7.1. Jose Sa, 6.65. Neto, 6.28. And Allison, 6.21. Looks like I unfortunately did not upload the newest slide of this before I started recording. So that's there. But yeah, predicted points should go Reyes, Pickford, Jose Sa, Neto, and Allison. Jordan Pickford, Nottingham Forest, and Liverpool could keep a clean sheet against Nottingham Forest. Will face a lot of shots against Liverpool. Liverpool seem to not really be clinical at the moment. In fact, they don't not seem to be. They are not clinical at the moment. So Pickford could be the pick in net for double game week 34, especially if you are on a free hit. Moving over to defenders now. This is the updated slide here. So we've got Gabriel from Arsenal, Andy Robertson from Liverpool, Tarkowski from Everton, Joachim Anderson from Crystal Palace, and Eight Nuri from Wolves. Rojo van Dijk was very close on this list, as was Saliba, as was Ben White, but that was the top five. That's why I decided to kind of pick one from each team, the highest scoring from each team, just to give us a different thought process. Eight Nuri missed out over the weekend game week 33 but he did travel with the squad according to gary o'neill so that is a boost uh hopefully he will be back for hopefully 120 minutes i think if eight nori gets 120 minutes in game week 34 he will be in my team if we get the all clear from gary o'neill he'll be in my team he currently is in my current draft that i have not updated since i activate the chip on sunday night so i'm still keen on having the wolves left wing back slash left winger uh in my team for double game week 34 gabriel here arsenal just clean sheet merchants it went wrong against Aston villa over the weekend but you would still expect them to bounce back with their two fixtures andy robertson has been playing a lot better looks a lot more attacking than the left side of Liverpool's kind of wing, but still no goals. It's kind of tough with Trent coming back. He'll probably be off set pieces as well. So something to consider there. Tarkowski, not for me, uh, maybe on my bench, I guess, as some filler. And Joaquin Anderson, Crystal Palace are looking really good, but Munoz could be the pick from Crystal Palace, but Anderson came up top here in the rotaballer.com predicted points. So Gabriel came in with 7.85, Andy Robertson 7.44, James Tarkowski 5.59, uh Joachim Anderson 5.58, and Ryan Aitnuri uh, with 4.37. Over the last six game weeks, Aitnuri leads all defenders on this chart with 0.39 non-penalty XGI per 90 and in FPL points with 36 points over his last six games. So Gabriel and Eight Nuri would be my picks from these five as of right now. Midfielders here gets a lot more interesting. Uh, Mohamed Salah, Bukayo Saka, Eberche, Eze, Sarabia, and Mc Dwight McNeil over here for the top five. I mean, Odegaard was on here. Luis Diaz was on here. Um, who else was on here? Elise was on here. So like I said, just picking one asset from each team or the top five assets uh, for one and limiting it to one for, for each team here. So Salah comes in with 12.33 predicted points. Saka 11.24. Eze 8.73. Sarabia 7.50. And McNeil 7.14. Over the last six FPL game weeks or over the last six games that these assets have played in FPL, Saka leads this five Midfielders with 34 points, Salah 30, Eze 28, Sarabia 20, McNeil 15. And then Salah leads in the kind of advanced stats, 0.91 non-penalty XGI per 90, then Eze, and then Saka at 0.61, Eze with 0.71. So Salah, Saka, Eze locks in my free hit uh, double game week 34 team. The next question is kind of the formation so it's definitely three at the back and that's just about five midfielders or five midfielders and two forwards or four midfielders and three forwards um depending on 
what happens in Europe in champ in Europe this week tonight and tomorrow night that could kind of tell us a lot i do think that odegaard is probably the safest arsenal asset even though he was taken off over the weekend i don't think it's all that serious we'll wait for tonight's lineups in the champions league to kind of confirm whether or not he's healthy kai havertz is going to get a lot of love but could arsenal be rotating it depends it really depends if they're going to be out of the champions league or not if they go out of the champions league i expect them to go full tilt in the league however if they do survive tonight against Bayern Munich and they advance to the semifinal against either Man City or Real Madrid. They could be slightly thinking about that in the future as they do have quite a lot of fixtures in a short amount of time. They play Wednesday, they play Saturday, they play Tuesday. I think they play Saturday again. So there'll be some rest there, but that three games in about six or seven days could be rough for Arsenal assets. So you may just want to go with the X minutes monsters, which would be Saka and Odegaard. As for Crystal Palace, as long as Eze is fit and he makes it through each game, he is a phenomenal asset, very cheap. If you're not on double game week, or if you're not on free hit for double game week 34, I would still recommend bringing in Eze as they do have a nice fixture on the back end in 35. It does get a little bit tough towards the end of the season for Crystal Palace, but still that kind of upside does not come around very often. So I would definitely consider Eze and Salah. While it's kind of boring and Liverpool are not firing on all cylinders, I do think he is probably the best captaincy candidate. We'll get into that a little bit later. But yeah, this is where the top five assets are. Salah, Saka, Eze, Sarabia, and McNeil. McNeil's not really in consideration for me for Everton. And Sarabia is a nice enabler. Could be on penalties. Wolves penalty situations all up in the air. Like Cunha's back. Uh, Huang could be back. Sarabia has taken the last couple of penalties. So if you're banking on Sarabia getting penalties and that's why he's in your team, I'm not entirely sure if that is the best route for you. Moving over to forwards here, we've got Dominic Solanke, Darwin Nunez, Jean-Philippe Mateta, Matthias Cunha, and Ollie McBurney in the top five. Yes, a Sheffield United player makes it in to the top five forwards here. Solanke leads the way with 8.66 predicted points, according to rotaballer.com. Darwin at 8.2, Mateta 7.49, Cunha 6.89, and McBurney 6.75. Over the last six games for FPL, uh, Cunha leads the way at 35 points. Then it is Mateta, 28, Solanke, 26, Darwin, 25, McBurney, 23. And in the advanced metrics, uh, no surprise here, Darwin Nunez leads the way with 0.78 non penalty XGI per 90, followed by McBurney, Mateta, Cunha, and then Solanke. So a lot of people that were not on or who will not be on free hit 34 are going to have. Dominic Solanke as they held him all the way through from their double game week 28 and then they free hit in 29 as well when Bournemouth didn't have a game so I think Solanke if you're on free hit 34 is kind of a, a smart play kind of cover off the rest of those guys that do not have the free hit you don't have to go super different on your free hit as you will have all the best players so you don't have to have every single differential because you having a free hit will be different enough. So just remember that when you use your free hit as well. So Solanke is a smart play there. The next question is, who out of Darwin, Mateta, and Cunha do you want in your team? I No offense to Ollie McBurney, but he's probably not going to crack the double game week 34 free hit lineup. But Darwin, a lot of people still have him, although I sold him last week for Nicholas Jackson. That worked out quite well. Is Darwin playing poor enough that he, like, if he plays 90 minutes, I mean, he played a lot of the game against Atalanta. I'm actually, admittedly, I did turn off the game about, like, 80, 80, 85 minutes on Thursday night, so I was just not feeling it at all, so I'm not entirely sure if Darwin played that full game, but then he played a ton on Sunday against Crystal Palace. He was eventually brought off, so... If Darwin plays the full night against Atalanta on Thursday, I don't think he is the safest option for minutes, but I do think Solanke and Mateta will get at least 160 minutes uh, over double game week 34. And Mateta is kind of firing right now. He's a great asset. Crystal Palace playing some good football, although they lost 4-2 to Man City 
last week. They came into Anfield and they looked the part. They looked the part of like a probably top half team for the 2024, 2025 season. So definitely need to remember that for next season and the kind of preseason picks. Cunha at Wolves just coming back from kind of a long layoff. So I'm not sure if he's going to get more than 150, like 100, between 120 to 140 minutes in double game week 34. So it might just be smart to go with the X minutes play again with Solanke and Mateta up front. However, you could go with McBurney on your bench if you're going 3-5-2. But if you're going 3-4-3, I think I would take the punt on Darwin. Here are a couple of drafts. So draft number one here on the left is kind of the Mplatey FPL review recommended uh, draft. And on the right here, I have my kind of good vibes draft. Um, so for the computer draft, it is Henderson in goal with Gabrielle Robertson and Saliba at the back, then Eze, Saka, Luis Diaz, Mohamed Salah, and Saravia in the midfield, then Mateta and Solanke up front with Pickford, Cunha, Tarkowski, and Michael Lenko on the bench. Nothing wrong with that team. It's pretty boring. Um, Eze, Mateta, totally get it. Those are probably the two best picks for Crystal Palace. Henderson and goal, two home ties against West Ham and Newcastle. That's really nice as well. But the double Arsenal defense, I think if I had to pick one, I would go with Saliba over Gabriel. It just feels a little bit more secure. Gabriel was not seen in training last Friday. He did end up starting still, but just wondering if there's some fatigue building in there. So I think Saliba would be the pick over Gabrielle for me if I was just going with one of those two. However, I do fancy Ben White a little bit more, a little bit more attacking. He's been okay. Um, so that's where I would go. And then draft number two here, the vibes draft, as I would call it, is Pickford and goal kind of going for the not in a forest clean sheet and then a bunch of save points against Liverpool who are not really firing in all cylinders right now. So could Everton sneak out a result against Liverpool and just totally end their title hopes? Possibly. Um, I hope not, but that's kind of the vibes. Pick in goal, then Ben White, Eight Nuri, and Trent at the back, along with Eze, Saka, Jota. If Jota's fit, He's gonna get the he's gonna get a lot of playing time in double game week 34, even if it's just 120 minutes for Jota, like a 90 and a 30, he could score three goals in that time span. He is Liverpool's best finisher, and Klopp will have seen that Liverpool are not scoring goals right now. So why not put your best finisher on the field? So Jota would be in my vibes draft here, along with Salah and Odegaard and Mateta and Solanke up front again with Jose Sa, Cunha, Tarkowski, and Munoz at the back. That would be my vibes. And looking at it right now, I like it. I would like to see Trent probably pay about 30 minutes in Europe uh, or even start and only play 60. That would show some major fitness there, just depending on if Liverpool want to try and make a huge comeback against Atalanta on the road. We'll see how Klopp puts out that lineup for game week or uh, for Thursday night. And we'll kind of be able to tell He's taking it seriously. If I see Harvey Elliott or Curtis Jones kind of on the starting sheet, uh, I'm not anticipating that Klopp thinks we can make a comeback there. Captaincy debate is between three main guys, I would think. Salah, Saka, Solanke. I've got their fixtures, their predicted points, their non-penalty XGI, and their FPL points over the last six game weeks here. They're all... Saka's the only one with one home game. Salah plays Fulham and Everton on the road. Solanke plays Aston Villa and Wolves on the road. Saka's got Wolves on the road and Chelsea at home. Predicted points, Salah leads the way 12.33 to 11.24 for Saka and 8.66 for Solanke. Saka leads in predicted points. He leads in non predicted XGI over the last six, and he only trails Saka by four points over the last six game weeks. I think Saka, or Salah is the he's a fantastic pick he's on penalties sometimes he doesn't play well and he still lucks into goals and sometimes he plays really well and just doesn't go his way liverpool with jota back in the team should be a lot more sharp clinical some assists should go into the back of the net so i do think salah will come out firing we'll see if he starts on thursday maybe that'll be 
an indication that he's not going to start both games. But I mean, Liverpool, the title's not over. It's just a lot harder to do now that they kind of messed that up against Crystal Palace last week and Man United the week before that, to be honest. But I would anticipate Salah playing, uh, I mean, 90 in the first game, 90 in one of the games and at least 45 in the other. So 135 minutes of Mohamed Salah in a double game week should be enough to be your captaincy. But if you want to go with Saka or Solanke, totally understand that. Solanke is probably the most nailed for 170, 180 minutes over the two game week, also on penalties for Bournemouth. So nothing wrong with that pick either, but Sala would be my pick for double game week 34 captaincy. Here are my thoughts for double game week 34. This is my current draft right now. Uh, this is just what I put together on Sunday night. Uh, Pickford, Saliba, Alexander Arnold, Eight Nuri, Havert, Saka, Elise, Sala, Eze, Mateta, and Solanke up front. Um, Mateta Solanke seems pretty nailed uh, up front. Salah is my captain. Eze, Saka there. I really, really would like to get Eight Nuri and Alexander Arnold in that team, possibly along with Ben White. I don't hate that at all either. If for some reason I don't go with an Arsenal defender, David Rea could come into the side as, I mean, he could easily pick up two clean sheets in double game week 34. So something to think about there, but probably go triple Arsenal, Liverpool, and Crystal Palace at the end of the day. Elise, from what I can see, is a little bit of a minutes risk and possibly not, like he's coming off a lot of injuries this season. So maybe not trusting him in my double game week 34 team on my free hit. So that's likely to be a Jota spot. But yeah, I think with how few like clean sheets that are going around in FPL this year, I think that if you have the opportunity to have three attacking defenders like Ben White, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and Eight Nuri, and you can get 120 to 140 minutes out of each of those defenders, that is perfectly viable as a option on your free hit uh Saka as a Sala Mateta and Solanke are nailed as five of my attackers and yeah ignoring Holland and Palmer there's some rumors about people are people are going on the FPL community saying that they might go with Holland or Palmer on their sing, like as single game weekers which is fine they're fantastic assets but if you have a free hit chase the doubles that's what I would do. That's the most fun thing to do, right? I mean, we're all playing this game for fun. So that would be kind of my two cents on the thing. Like, yes, Holland could score a hat-trick against Brighton and could outscore a lot of double game weakers. But two game weeks or two fixtures are better than one and or usually they are. So I'm just going to go with that route for game week 34 but let me know what your thoughts are for double game week 34 we've got a uh, three days until the deadline yeah it's wednesday april 17th about 8 15 germany time here um so that's got about three four days of tinkering to kind of get the full thoughts in there but like and subscribe to the podcast rate it on spotify apple wherever you're listening as well subscribe to the youtube channel also would be greatly appreciated. Let me know what your thoughts are for Double Game Week 4. Hit me up on X at UNFPL. And good luck this game week. And once again, thanks for listening. And I will talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.